Hello, my name is Matt Denton. This is Mantis Hacks. In this video, I'm going to be printing some giant Lego. It's no surprise there. However, uh, the difference is I'm going to be printing one piece of Lego, and that is this uh, classic Technic Lego uh, knuckle, I suppose you could call it. Anyway, it's an iconic piece and uh, one of my favourites to print. Uh, this is the five time scale version that I use in all of my giant Lego models. And uh, recently, I did a 10 time scale version on my Taz Mini, uh, sorry, my Lulzbot Mini 2. Um, and it's a really satisfying print and there's something about it. It's a really nice kind of desk object, I don't know. What I thought I would do is try and print one even bigger on my Taz 6 and at two times scale maybe. I don't know whether it'll fit in there. Um, but to do so, I was gonna share a couple of tips and tricks that I use in my slicer. That is to speed up large scale prints. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, let's start by bringing in the model, which is the Technic uh, Axle Connector 3651. And let's cut it down onto the bed properly. One of my favorite features, place surface on the bed. Boom, there we go. Uh, center it up. And uh, double click on the model and we can get the scaling factor up. So that would be two times scale. Of course, I've done lots of printed in five times scale. I've already done one at 10 times scale. Doesn't look like 20 times scale is gonna fit. Nope, ooh, that's a shame. Uh, let's try 15 times scale. There we go, that's pretty good. So uh, 15 times scale on the TAS 6, I could go a bit further, but uh, my OCD likes the uh, roundness of 15. So the first tip is uh, to do a support structure actually. So within uh, Simplify 3D here, I'm gonna build some support. I'm gonna use a six millimeter pillar resolution and 65 degrees overhang. And now I'm gonna generate the automatic supports, which is great. But um, I know, just know from printing uh, and experience that much of this isn't needed. I do need support here on the lugs and I may need support in the middle. I have printed without this before, but as this is quite a large part, I'm probably gonna leave these supports in. But I don't need any of this support up the middle, all these down the side, because in the middle inside of here is a flat surface and it will bridge. So the great thing about this is I can just remove some. So here we go. I'm just gonna remove all the support, the support material that I know I don't need. Uh, and thus that is going to save um, a fair amount of time in the printing process. So let's do that first. Let's get rid of all this excessive support. Okay, that's pretty good. So let's have a look at the process settings. I'm doing this in medium resolution, so that's going to be um, 0.2 millimeter layer height. There we go. Let's just zoom in on that a bit, it's easier. So um, yeah, I've got a 0.5 mil no uh, nozzle diameter, and that's an auto extrusion of 0.6 millimeters. Uh, layer height of 0.2 millimeters, four top solid layers, three bottom solid layers, and two perimeters. Uh, that's gonna give me a perimeter thickness of at least one millimeter, so uh, that's enough. Uh, and then I've got one um, uh, nozzle priming extrusion for as a skirt. Um, there's no attachment to the brim or anything, because it should stick fine to the bed. And I've got an infill percentage of 10%. And I'm printing at about 60 millimeters a second with obviously under speeds for outside perimeters, solid infill and support structure. Okay, so that should do that. Um, let's uh, prepare the print and see what it comes up with. Okay, so it's coming up with a time of 30 hours and 14 minutes. You can probably see up here, drag it across, there we go. 30 hours, 14 minutes. And uh, that's um, quite a significant amount of time. Uh, we've saved some already just by getting rid of some of that support structure. We know we don't need, but there's another trick. And that is because we are running in um, a resolution of 0.2 millimeters. With a 0.5 mil nozzle, I can print a thickness up to 0.4 mil layer height. So what I can do on the infill setting here down here, I can combine every infill, uh, infill every two layers. So rather than doing an infill layer every layer, it skips them and does it every two layers and does a thick infill of 0.4 millimeter thick, which is fine because we don't need detail in the infill. 
Um, and we can also do that with support structure. So the support structure is only printed every other layer. And that's going to sort of save a significant amount of time. So now I've changed those settings. Let's prepare it again and see what happens. Okay, that's done. And it's come up with a print time of 21 hours and 8 minutes. So it saved a significant amount of time, nearly 10 hours. Uh, so there you go. That's, uh, that's my two tri tips to uh, reduce print times is um, combine infill layers if you can and uh, obviously remove any uh, support structure that's not needed. So let's save this out and uh, get it printing. Well that's the print started but I'll always watch the first layer go down just to make sure things are okay. Once that layer is complete then I'll leave the printer to do its thing. This print took just over 750 grams of material, which means I had to do a spool change just towards the end of the print. Well, there it is in all of its 15 times scale glory. Look at that. It's a beautiful piece. And just for size comparison, there is the bulldozer that I scaled up to five times scale. Can you imagine that at 15 times scale? It would be ridiculous and no, I'm not going to do it. But it's a lovely piece. There was a slight problem with the printing here. There's a bit of Y shift in the bed and that was caused by my filament guide snapping. Um, I was fortunately, I was in the room at the time because I was waiting to do a filament change. So I was managed to uh, rescue the part. But anyway, I hope the tips that I gave you uh, in as far as increasing speed on printing large parts were useful. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, happy printing. Don't forget to check out my other projects on the YouTube channel and facebook.com forward slash Mantis Robot. You can also follow me on Twitter at Mantis Robot or Instagram. And don't forget to check the description section for further information on materials and printers that I use and also links to other videos.